welcome to Lights on LA. I'm here with Arshak Berrigan and at the campaign office, the headquarters of your campaign, Dennis Sign, who is a councilman and also running for the city controller of the city of Los Angeles. Hello, how are you? Doing well, thank you. I am so honored to be here. We are honored to be here. I'm honored to have you both here. <laughs> thank you. Um, first of all, for everybody that does not know, you are running for city council, uh, city controller. Yes, I'm what currently is a city councilman. Los Angeles City represent the Southwest San Fernando Valley, and I'm a candidate for the Los Angeles City Controller, and that election is May 21st. And as City Controller, first of all, what is that for those of us that do not know? A lot of people don't know. They what is the control? They know what the mayor does. They know what the city attorney does. They know what the city councilman does. They know what the fire chief does and the police. People say, what does the controller do? The controller is the people's watchdog. The controller is the one that oversees all departments, the police, the fire, the airport, the harbor, water and power, oversees all departments to make sure that they're performing their job in the proper fashion. The controller writes all the checks for all the expenditures, and the controller does the monitoring to make sure that all the departments do with the charter mandates that they do. But I have a plan a five-point plan to put the controller's office in a different perspective and a different environment to serve the people. So you as a taxpayer right. elect people to represent you. If you were the controller, you would want to make sure that every department's performing to the maximum degree, working within the appropriate budget, not wasting money. That's what you would want as a taxpayer who's overseeing the operations of the city of Los Angeles. Right. So what the controller does is have performance audits, management audits, waste, fraud, and abuse to make sure things are done properly. But most of all, collect those dollars, those precious dollars that provide the services. So you don't actually go out there and collect it, but you make sure it's being collected. Being collected. So I have a five-point plan. Number one is you've got to find the money. Now, where do we find the money? If people pay their, all, pay their bills, we don't have any lawsuits, everything's great. The problem is we have a lot of lawsuits. Most of them come from the police department. Police department lawsuits amount to about $50 million a year. Wow. That's in addition to the money to run the police department. So we need to go after those lawsuits and see how we can correct risk management, how we can avoid those lawsuits. Now these aren't lawsuits where an officer gets involved in a pursuit and someone dies or an officer makes an arrest and someone gets injured. These are lawsuits involving internal conflicts, employee versus employee, called risk management. So we need to address that. We need to make sure that we can reduce or best eliminate, and then those dollars come back into the city treasury to then be dispersed for all the services. So you've got to find the money. Then you've got to track the money. Now, how do you track the money? We need to have real numbers online where each department gets a certain budget, and we need to know, as taxpayers, as consumers, how much they're spending. Are they working within the boundaries? And I'll give you an example of what we're seeing on the 405 freeway expansion. We now learn that it's a year and a half behind schedule, and it's $100 million over the billion dollars. So all of a sudden, wait, now we're going to be tied up for another year and a half, year and, a half. and it's going to cost $100 million more than the billion that's been appropriated? Well, something's wrong with that picture. What the controller can do is make sure along the way we have red flags that come in to say, something's wrong, we need to step in, make a analysis, performance, or production or something, we're the ones who independently go in and monitor, see what's going on. So we're going to, number one, find the money, track the money, collect the money to make sure that we can collect the money that people owe the city of Los Angeles. Whether it's the 26 plus million dollars that was owed, and we're collecting some of it now from parking lot owners, or the people who don't pay their fair share of the taxes for their property, etc. So find it, track it, collect, collect it. it. And then you've got waste, fraud, and abuse. So you have to have an aggressive waste, fraud, and abuse unit that goes after the people who are stealing from the city. There's one investigator that the city has currently under the controller's office. I want to expand that operation. I want people to know when they contact the controller's office, we will be responding to those issues and finding those individuals who are cheating the taxpayers. So again, you've got those different aspects. First of all, you've got to find it track it, collect it, waste, fraud, and abuse with your risk management. And then what you have is the final chapter, the reports, the documents, the estimated, the comprehensive, 
you've got reports and audits, performance audits, management audits, to make sure that things are running smooth. Now, if you're on a ship, the captain of the ship can look at all the gauges and make sure everything's working smooth, everything's fine. When things aren't working fine, those gauges are going to tell you. What the controller does is have the mechanism. That mechanism is the performance audit, management audit, other audits that are done. And what the controller then does, as the taxpayer's watchdog, is bring that to the taxpayers, bring that to the public through the media, inform the council, inform the mayor, and make the changes that are necessary. Find it, track it, collect it, waste, fraud, and abuse, and the documents. So you combine that with the resources to go after those individuals who are cheating the system. The Treasury, the finance, is responsible for collecting. If they're not doing their job, you do a performance audit on that department and make sure they do their job. You okay. send out a letter, you send out a notice that someone owes money, thousands, millions of dollars. Well, they disregard that. You've got to have some teeth in to that collection process. Uh, Dennis, speaking of the collection, uh, first of all, what areas do you cover? Is it the entire state itself? Or no, the city, just the city. Just the city. You cover all okay. city operations, everything from the port to the police to the fire, Department of Transportation, every single department falls under the controller's office. Every single department, the controller can go in and investigate, mm -hmm. find out if it's running smooth. That's what we have audits, performance audits. Are they performing as they're required? Correct. Management audits. Is management doing what they're supposed to do? So you don't have a situation, as we've seen on the 405 freeway, which is run by the state, by the way, mm -hmm. but give you an example where it's a year and a half behind schedule and a hundred million dollars over the billion dollars. What the controller needs to do is be aggressive and be proactive and not reactive. So when you're proactive, you can eliminate a lot of these problems from occurring. It shouldn't be that it's a hundred million dollars over budget and it's a year and a half late. That's why we have the red flag that comes up to say, we are exceeding budget or on budget. And when you can put those numbers, those real numbers online, the general public, it's all taxpayers' money. The general public will see it, the elected officials will see it, the media will see it. So you've got to take the information and publish it and move it forward and not keep it secret and do an annual right. analysis. Uh, Dennis, keep it current uh, daily. On a percentage wise, how much of the money owed, owed to the city are you guys able to collect on an annual basis? I don't have that number. What I will tell okay. you is the biggest liability comes from ambulance service where we provide the transportation and the rescue the 9-11 right. rescue. Right. We are at the national average, which is not very impressive. The other problem that we're having is parking tickets, where we are not collecting all that needs to be collected. There's got to be consequences when you park in the handicap zone and don't pay the ticket. Of course. Right. There's got to be consequences, because that's all coming out of taxpayers' dollars. Mm -hmm. Remember, the city of Los Angeles is a service industry. They service the fire. The police, police, sanitation, right. whatever the case may be, street paving, sidewalk repair. It's all a service industry, and the taxpayers are paying for that service. So we need to do a better job with the dollars that we receive. The city of Los Angeles this next fiscal year is looking at almost an $8 billion general fund budget. That doesn't include the extras that come in from grants, et cetera. So when you have that type of money, you've got to make sure it's done properly. And as the experience that I've gained through my career in law enforcement, through my 12 years in the city council. Take that and move forward and be accountable and responsible and hold those people who are accountable and responsible to do their job. And if they're not doing their job, then the mayor has the ability to remove them from mm -hmm. that office. The only office general manager that has a contract is the police chief, has a five-year contract with a five-year renewal. Every other general manager serves at the will of the mayor. We need to have people in leadership that are accountable and responsible because each and every one of us is paying taxes for a service. Right. We don't expect to have higher taxes. What we expect to have is our tax dollars put to good use, good use. to provide quality of life for the communities of the City of the Angels. Fifteen different council offices, number of communities, but every community needs their share of that pie, share of these services to have your trash picked up in a timely manner, to have your libraries open, your recs and parks, your swimming pools that are public. A lot of people live in apartments don't have pools. That's all services that the city of Los Angeles provides. We need to provide those services. And what the controller does is make sure that the money is there to provide the services and at the same and time... Good use and collect. Collect. And at the same time, the departments do what they're supposed to do. Now, the collection is up to the Treasury Finance Department. We don't actually, as a controller, go out and collect the money. That's up to the Treasury, Treasury. Finance Department. And if they're not doing the job, 
then we need to bring that forward to the council, the mayor, and the general public. Sorry to interrupt, but... No interruption. You, You're doing the interview. You are somebody that has been very, very well known in, in Los Angeles. And well, we'll see has, how well known I am. And aunt. has done <laughs> a lot for our community. Yes. First of all, as you served with LAPD, um, you have 30, been... 33 active years in the streets of Los Angeles protecting the families, the businesses, 33 years in the streets of Los Angeles. And 12 years reserve. And the last 12, I've been a reserve, so that's 45 years. And your son is years. currently going to be a sergeant. He is a sergeant. He is a sergeant for LAPD. Well, you know about law enforcement a little I bit. Do. <laughs> yes, you do. yes, I so do. So my son, I'm very proud of my son, Christopher, who's an LAPD sergeant. And my other son, Eric, is a pilot, pilot for a major airline. Uh, I've got two sons, and they're both wonderful. Just the product of daddy. Product. Well, dad and mom. You dad know, and mom. Mom obviously did a lot to, well, to of mold course, them. Of course. But they're responsible. Uh, they're professional, uh, and they serve the family name, design name, very, very proud. So I'm very proud of both of them, and I speak with them frequently. I, I, I spoke, to, well, when Eric's flying, uh, he'll be in some other state. Uh, so we communicate, but not as often as Chris. I'm talking to my son, Christopher, almost every day. And you serve as city council, and that is yeah. for 11 years. 12. 12 years. Just finishing. Uh, three four-year terms. So I'm coming to the end, the end of June. I will trim out as a city councilman. The last time I ran, I won by 72%. Wow. So I have a lot of support in the community. But it's not just going to city council and taking the votes on the issues, but it's being with the community, with the Chamber of Commerce, 